what is the biggest minotaur you faced in your life? The biggest minotaur I faced is trying to fit in uh, and bullying as well, which was a big minotaur in my childhood. Mm-hmm. And, and that based on is because you've got autism or what, what what was the bullying about? So I didn't find out I was autistic till I was 16. I got that at 16. But before that, the bullying was just being different and, you know, just trying to fit in and stuff like that. And I wasn't one of those kids that wasn't the hardest, wasn't, wasn't into fighting and stuff like that. I was just always... They just used to make fun of me for no reason, basically, just to find a reason and pick on me. Mm, okay, cool. We'll unpack that. But before we do, um, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Uh, my guest today is Harris Hussain, who is a local lad from Bradford. But yeah, I'll Bradford. pass it over to give a quick introduction into yourself and who you are, what you do. Hi, guys. My name's uh, um, Harris. Um, I'm a full-time content creator. That's That's what I'm trying to be at the moment. And I'm trying to take it to a next level. And my niche is mainly autism. And I speak about hair loss as well as I suffered with hair loss and I had a hair transplant. So them are my two main niches where I speak about hair loss, hair transplants and autism awareness as well. Brilliant, brilliant. So I think there's quite a lot to unpack in this. I think there's quite a few minotaurs in there yeah, yeah. Rather, rather than one. So let's start with the one you mentioned, uh, bullying as a child so yeah what's like some of your earliest memories what were some of the incidents and um you know do you know what the cause was or what, what kind of happened just unpack that a little bit please uh bullying started around the second school i went to the first school yeah i did get quite picked on but i always used to fit in so then they wouldn't say anything uh, you know, I, I made a video in year seven, year eight. I, it was me m- rapping. So I was always into making videos from a young child. And th- yeah, I got the piss taken out of me and stuff like that for a bit. And then uh, I got managed to move to a, a, p- a prove. I went to a prove first. Um, I failed that. Then they managed to move me to a secondary school, and that's when the proper bullying started to come in. Like the year above, the older lads used to, you know, make fun of me. You know, a few times I got hit. That's mm, pretty. Okay. I, you know, I could go into more detail, but it's just a lot. It's a lot to speak about the bullying. Yeah, okay, no need to go, go into too much detail then if you're not comfortable. Um, so was there any specific reason? Like um, what made what, what do you think made you different or not fit in compared to everybody else? It's because I was always outgoing. I was a, a well smart kid, you know. I used to have my hair up. I used to wear nice clothes. And, you know, I was just different from a, a lot of kids. And they just used to, you know, try and pick things out to try and pick on me. Mm. so in hindsight now do you think it was anything to do with the autism or was it just completely different and unrelated yeah maybe back then obviously i had the i had the traits but we didn't know i was autistic and you know they might have found me weird and stuff like that that's what people tend to find autistic people weird because they're different but i always felt i was different from a young age and then once i got my diagnosis and then i started speaking about it three years ago and now i kind of like realize things and what i did as a child Mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about this um autism then i suppose for the people that don't quite know what what autism is maybe you could start off with just a a brief explanation about what is autism and, and and how has it impacted you personally so autism is a neurodevelopment condition so i'm neurodivergent so you know there's autism there's adhd which a lot of people know of ADHD. So autism is where a person um, struggles to communicate and, you know, we, we can't show empathy or sympathy. It's very hard for us. Um, we struggle with eye contact as well. A lot of autistic people, you know, look down, they look there. But I practice it. So I kind of practice how to maintain eye contact. It's manageable, but it's not curable. You know, I've heard a lot of people say they can cure autism, but there is no cure for a neurodevelopment condition. You're born with it. Um, you know, living with autism is like living in a different planet. That's how I feel, because you mm. feel like 
you have to script, act a certain way, script a conversation. Um, there, there's so much details to go into autism. Uh, there's meltdowns, uh, which a lot of things build up and that makes you angry and you tend to do stuff. So an artistic meltdown mainly happens at home. We don't feel comfortable doing it in front of people because we're going to be judged. And there's masking as well. Autism masking is when you hide your autistic traits. You try to act mm. as normal as you can. That's okay, mainly I... about autism, really. The main points. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for that. And when then did you kind of first realize that you've got some symptoms or when did you first become aware of it? Um, and what were some of those signs that that, that made you aware? I think my family were aware, like I've started talking at four, so it was a kind of a late age and I had some traits then and in, in primary school they didn't pick up on it. Um, so secondary school still didn't get a diagnosis. I think till late, the, you know, it was on a waiting list and then till age 16 they diagnosed me uh, year 11, so it's kind of late. Uh, no education, healthcare plan didn't come in. So I got, I, I went to two pupil referral units, uh, two secondary schools. I didn't get my GCSEs. I didn't sit my GCSEs at all. So no, I've got no education, no, no qualifications, but you don't really need that to go far in life. You know, like brother here himself was a lawyer and he quitted it because maybe, you know, like, you can do things like I'm doing TikTok full time. I'm trying. I'm gonna go into YouTube. I'm gonna try and scale it uh, as best as I can. I know it's gonna be slow now, but inshallah, it will get better. The money will come in. The views will come in. That's all. You just need patience. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot to unpack. Then, obviously, and you know, I wish you the most success on, on yeah. this journey. And you are doing the right Thank thing. Thank you. I and mean, when I've been obviously seeing some of your TikTok videos. Um, do you still get bullied then for the autism or is it better now? Like what's, what's your experience in life now? Um, and, and obviously you're, you're, you're bo- more open about it. Uh, and what is the reaction that you, you, you generally t- tend to get? I think now people hate on you behind an account. Yeah, I'll get a few comments, silly comments. I did have mates that did make a few comments. I cut them off. Anyone that tries and makes phone or little digs, I'll, I'll cut them off instantly because that's a personal thing. You don't bring it up. You don't make a dig. I think now people know know me for who I am. They understand me for who I am. People will see me out and they'll say, Yo, you know, I respect what you're doing. Or some people wouldn't really say out because, you know, they wouldn't really say out to your face. Like when you're younger, you're kids. But when you're adults, you, you don't really say out to someone's face or this, that. They mainly fake the accounts, but I block them. I ignore them. And how about in real life? Obviously, that's on TikTok. But how about in real life? Real life, no, I, I've had people come up to me and, like, you know, show me support. And uh, there are, some people have asked me what it is and I've, I've kind of explained it. Uh, but other than that, I just keep myself to myself. I go to the gym and I don't really like to be out too much, like in, in a shopping center or I just mind my business, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And obviously now you, you mentioned that you didn't get any GCSEs or you didn't get yeah. any support. So... Like, are you disappointed then that this wasn't picked up? Or who should have picked it up? Um, should the school have picked it up or anyone? Or what's the, like, if somebody's got a child now that's in, in the school system and they're not sure, like, what are some of the signs that they need to look out for and, and basically try to find out whether there is an issue here or not? So lack of eye contact and re- name responding when the child's not doing that, that's the early signs. Uh, as for education, yeah, I think the school failed me, definitely. Yeah, I was a bit of a bad kid and I used to mess about and stuff like that. But they shouldn't have put me in a pro yet or doing this. They should have like, like sat down, seen what the issues are, try and fix it. Uh, I'm a disappointed. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed because I did miss out on uni and people had fun in uni. But then I think, again, you're just stuck in a system. You're going to go to uni. You're going to get into debt. And I'm thinking now I'm better that I haven't gone to uni. I'm debt free. Yeah, I'm. I'm doing TikTok full time. It's not some. It's not a big thing at the moment. But online money is getting better. Everyone's making money online now, so there's no need for me to feel disappointed. Because I've seen people that have gone to uni and they're still in the same place. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, great attitude to have. And I suppose yeah, yeah. it's a, a fair point. Like obviously, I think um, the day and age we live in now, obviously, there's different options available, and making money online is, is yeah. one of those options. Um, and 
So basically, since you had the diagnosis, then so yeah. they diagnosed you um, as autistic. Uh, have they or has your life changed since then? Or do you have to do certain things that are different? Like what what do the medical professionals advise you to do, or that your family has to do? Like has has there been a change, or or is it still the same? No, I'm still the same. Obviously, I've just got better. Learn how to cope with it. Older now. You know, you manage things. I, I, you know, I look into things online. You know, learn how to socialize better. Spoke to strangers every day, continuously. I, you know, I, I, I just um, get along with it now. You know, I learn to accept who I am. And with the meltdowns, I, I did get some medication tablets to help with that. It's slowly helping. That's it. You just take every day, step by step. To be honest. Mm, brilliant and. You know, I was looking upon it before, Ajahn, and, and there's a sense that there's different levels of autism. Yeah. So what level would you say you're at? All right, I'm at Asperger's, yeah. There's uh, there's uh, entrepreneurs like Elon Musk has Asperger's. They said Bill Gates has some kind of autism as well. There's Albert Einstein has been mentioned. So all these like famous people that have done well in life have some form of autism. So it kind of made me feel bad. I'm like, whoa, look, these love guys. So what's, what's there to worry about? So it's just more of a genius than anything. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've got a talent there, but it's, yeah, I still need to find it. It's a bit hidden. Mm-hmm. But I think this maybe might be my talent, making videos. Still, yeah, absolutely. It no, takes obviously. a lot for someone to go on camera and speak about something. 100%. Like, you yeah. know, like they say, um, the fear of speaking is is the biggest fear people have. And yeah. even with my professional background and qualifications, it was one of my biggest fears. And, and I did videos and podcasting to overcome that fear. So, you know, 100%, it takes a lot of courage to put yourself on camera, but then to also talk about what you're talking about. It takes yeah. even more courage. So um, what then, I mean, obviously, you know, you, I know you're trying to become a cr- content creator, but like, do you have a wider mission with, with the content that you're trying to create? Are you trying to inspire a specific type of people? Is it for the autism community, for the parents yeah. of autists? Or, you know, what is your kind of wider mission here? So wider mission is mainly the South Asian community, trying to get it more out there in the Pakistani community, Indian community, Bengali community, you know, the whole South Asian community mainly, you know, that's the main mission because it's unrecognized because Pakistanis always think, oh, you know, he just messes about, there's nothing wrong with him, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and what has the reaction been specifically then from the Pakistani community? Have they been receptive to it or are they just, you know, flagging it away or what, what's, what's been your experience so far? From my videos, uh, I'd say 90% have been, you know, happy with it. I've got loads of messages, you know, loads of uh, brothers message me, loads of sisters message me, loads of, you know, mothers of child message me, asking me for advice, you know. But I always say to them, I cannot, like, give you so much advice because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a profession. I can only speak on my experience. My my ma- videos are mainly for my teenagers, so kids that are 16 message me, they can relate to, I can give them the advice. That I wish I, I was that kid at one certain of a point of my life at 16. I wish I could go back and change certain things, and I give them that same advice. Brilliant, brilliant. I love that, and... Like how how are you feeling generally then? Like are you positive, upbeat, or do you get down and depressed, um, or you know what's your general outlook on life because of this diagnosis? I have my down days, but recently I've been feeling good. I've been going to the gym. I've been focusing on myself and you know focusing on you know my content, my videos, and just that's the main thing that keeps me positive. Brilliant. And, and is that what you recommend the 16 year olds to do? Like what, I suppose, what, what's the biggest kind of question they have or what, what are they asking you the most and what's the most common advice that you give back? Okay, they, you know, if they're struggling, I'd say get support as soon as possible. Once you're 15, 16, because your GCSE is your most important. It's like, I haven't got it, but I wish I could go back and it's just a backup plan there and in case something falls down, you've got something that you can go get a job with it. Um, but yeah, that's the main thing. Just get the spot. Yeah, they do message me like, oh, I'm scared to tell people that I'm autistic and stuff like that. I don't push people to go out there and tell people. Eh? If you want to go and tell people and feel comfortable about it, I know there's loads of people that hide it. So it's totally up to you. 
Mm-hmm. And before you were a content creator, then like obviously you haven't got the GCSEs, but have yeah. you had any other type of work? Or have you struggled to find work because I, I of this? Did, or what's been your experience in? I did struggle to fi- find work, but I was buying and reselling clothes, you know. So I was, you know, selling stuff online. So that was before I made TikTok then I jumped on that. So I was always someone that was, you know, a bit of a young person that was trying to do something, try to work for themselves. So, yeah, I did have a few work experience when I was younger, but I was always like, you know, call Sada, call this, you know, like a bit dopey, they would say. But I was, at the time, I, you know, I, I didn't, you know, when you're young, you're clumsy. That's kind of what autistic people get named. But the thing is, we're clever at different things. We're not always Absolutely. workaholics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so you've always basically done things for yourself. Have you ever applied for jobs or have you had a, a, a job working for somebody else? Or? Yeah, I worked in Tesco. I did that as a temporary thing, yeah. And now um, I might apply for something, but at the moment I just want to focus on this. Yeah, and, and was it difficult going into a normal job then? Or like was it, you know, was the support there? Or was it, how, how do you handle it? Oh, that was a bit difficult, yeah, because it was first time, you know, my first ever job, I was around 17, 18 then, so it was a bit hard. And and were they aware of your diagnosis? And no, I didn't write it down they... at the time, I didn't even tell them. That, back then, I didn't used to tell anyone or write it down. I didn't even know, like, mm. we f- know too much of it at the time, only till once I hit 20, I started looking into it more and speaking about it when I got older. Mm, brilliant brilliant okay so um obviously you know you don't want to go too much into the bullying but if, if somebody is going through that situation like when you were going through that situation did you tell your parents or your family or anyone or did you just keep it in yourself i did keep it in for a bit and then obviously i spoke i spoke to my dad about it and when i used to go out when i was younger my dad used to go everywhere with me you know go to town my dad would go here go there I'd have an issue, I'd tell my dad. Back then, you know, through school, I wish I did, you know, but I was just scared of, you know, if nobody likes a snitch, nobody likes someone who's the grass. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to tell uh, the the teachers or my mom. And that's what the main reason I got kicked out of my second school because I used to Skype lessons because I was just scared of the, the lads here above. Yes, and I mom. still see these people today and they still try and act normal. But, you know, life goes on, you just learn to forgive. But obviously, you will still have that little grudge in you where you can remember, oh. wait a minute, this person said this. They said that. I, I Like, that's some artistic. We remember little things, what someone's done to us from five to ten years ago. Of course. No, no, of course. You know, bullying is... It's but you right? always remember who treated you good and bad in yeah. life. Yeah, 100%. So... I suppose then, would you, based on that experience, if somebody's going through that situation right now, there's a young lad or a young lady, um, school or whatever, they're getting bullied and they've got the same fears that you had. They don't want to be a snitch. They don't yeah. want to, you know, would you advise them to forget about what people might think, forget about being considered a snitch, like tell people or would you say, well, you know, I understand and I, I, I you know, maybe you shouldn't or what's the, What's the tell, you, tell your family, yeah. tell the teachers what's the worst they can do. They can't do nothing to you nowadays. Mm. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. So you mentioned stuff about hair loss as well. Yeah. That, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that journey. So that journey started losing hair at 18. Yeah. Wow. I didn't take too much notice of it. It was just little thinning, thinning. It got worse and worse as they got along the years. So I started to wear caps, hats all the time. I used to wear a hat all the time. Uh, so I shared my journey on hell. A, a friend said it to me, Harris, why don't you make a video about it? Made a video, must have got about 500,000 views. Made another video a year later, got about 1 million views. And I thought I might as well start talking about this. So I got a hair transplant in Turkey 18 months ago. Started speaking about my hair transplant journey. And then I in- encouraged guys not to go for a hair transplant early like me and try and get on a medication protocol from a young age and fight it so there's always some alternative surgery is last option that's what i say to guys okay so so you've started losing hair quite early on yeah was there a reason for it or was it just natural or what What was the mainly genetics because but uh, i got it early because like my dad's bald but he started losing his 30s 
and then a few uncles they lost their hair early as well. So it's mainly genetics. Okay, so so when you say you wouldn't encourage surgery until a last resort and try some other options, what are some of those other options people so, can try? Minoxidil, finasteride, um, derma rolling, derma stamping, rosemary oil. There's so many options. If you guys, you can message me on uh, my TikTok and, you know, I'll give you some advice on hair loss. Does it actually work though? There's a lot of stuff on the market, but does it actually work? They, these products do work. The FDA regulate, so they, but they, they do have side effects, guys. So I always encourage people to do the research before mm. taking something. Side effects like? Um... Finasteride is like low libido side effect. A lot, if one percent affects guys, and minoxidil is, you can get heart heart side effects, mm. and, and like and headaches. Did you try any of these yourself, or did you just go straight for surgery? No, no. Uh, at the time, no, I didn't try. It. I'm on them now. Finasteride, the pills, I had side effects. I got off the pill. I went on to the topical solution where you spray into your head, and then the minoxidil. I take a pill form. I'm not no side effects. All right, so so you're still taking this stuff despite the surgery. So what, you have what to the, take it. You have to, okay. Yeah, because so does, what does the surgery do? And does the surgery not resolve the issue, or what's the? What that basically does, you know, you you they take hair from the back here, you yeah. put it in the top, but your untransplanted hairs will still fall out. So the, these hairs are not DHT. So the DHT will target them hairs, but they'll target the untransplanted hairs. So that, you know, you could have a hair transplant and you could have bold hair and then little strings of hairs. Just look stupid. A waste of money. Okay. Oh, so the sur- you think the surgery was a waste of money? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, if you're not on medication, what's the right. point getting out? It's like you're going to the gym, you, you have, you're putting steroids in whatever and you stop, you're going to lose your gain. So you have, you, you have to do it to whenever you want to keep your hair. So you can't, fight. there's no... Fix for it yet without medication. Right. Either go right. bald or okay. just okay. embrace so, it. So my, my understanding, I mean, I, I haven't done any research on this, but my understanding yeah. is you go to Turkey, you get the hair transplant and, you, and you're done, but no, that's no. not the case. So the medication. Like, so you still have to stay. So are you going to have to be on medication forever then? or well, will well, Whenever be- till I want to keep my hair, really. Obviously, I just want to keep it till I'm my young, age, young years, to be mm. honest. Okay. And so is your TikTok mainly about autism or hair or both? It's both now. You know, I it was autism before. Then, you know, I like to do different stuff. Like now I'm doing gym videos, self-improvement. I just want to make it like everything, a bit of mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and what would you like to see then happen in, in the Asian community then, especially with autism? Like I know you've got this mission, you're talking about it, but what result or what impact do you want to have in the Asian community? I just want them to accept it and not like ignore it because a lot of Asian families do. And I've seen a few Asian creators now talk about it because mm. I was the first one to speak about it. I didn't see anyone speak about it back then. Then the loads of people started speaking about it and it made me kind of happy seeing loads of guys speak about it. And it was hard to get on podcasts, you know, Obviously, one woman reached out to me about the proper college one. Then I, I've reached out to a few pages. They kind of left me on scene. Then I thought yeah, it was a big knot. So then I reached out to you and, you know, I got a reply. So thank you for, you know, <laughs> recognizing it, man. No, no, it's all good. I'm happy to obviously help people out. You've got to speak it. about different topics on a podcast because mental health and stuff like this is unrecognized. It has to, everyone just wants to hear gangsters and crimes and prison years and this is not recognized so it's good to speak about certain topics like this yeah i think it's definitely changing now uh, yeah it, it, mental health especially is being talked about more yeah although it does sometimes feel like it's more you know just people trying to show they're talking about it rather than any yeah. kind of real concern um especially in obviously in the southeast asian community yeah uh so once you know the community does accept it yes autism exists it needs to be taken seriously what then what what should happen you know what what steps should they take or what should happen after that to help people with autism right steps for people is get the diagnosis is it kind of long it'll take a while um, i i have had a few guys saying they self-diagnosed which i don't really agree on that self-diagnosing mm. yourself on something and I, I spoke to a guy and I said, why don't you go get the diagnosis? He's like, no, nah, because they, 
it's not good this that so you know fair enough some people don't want to get diagnosed but i think diagnosis is the best thing because there's support out there for certain people who can't work who you know there's severe autism where people can't even talk they flap their hands. I've got a little cousin. He's four years old. He's got severe autism. He can't speak yet. Then I've got another cousin who's autistic, two years younger than me. So it's genetic as well, by the way. Autistic. Wow. It, it runs in the family. It could be from certain family members. Okay. And uh, so there's no cure for it? There's no cure. Apparently, there is a cure, but I don't think there's cures for it. So, so if with these you know people who are severely autistic like what if there's no cure for it what what is the treatment and what you know is it just taking them away or what what, what kind of happens? there's no treatment for that you know that's just that's given by a line however you know everyone's different that's more or less there's no cure for severe autism there's no cure for even mild autism you just gotta learn how to manage it so you should always just be blessed and happy for whatever you have some days i do think like you know why have i been like this five but then i learn how to accept it i'm like this there's worse things going on in life you know i could have had no legs i could have had no arms so you learn how to accept life and just cope with it and manage it better i love that i love the attitude uh, yeah so, so so for the people that are watching then how what is your process for managing it what what, what do you do and what, what can they implement to help them manage it as well so managing your meltdowns is find out what's triggering your meltdowns and then what you do is you obviously whoever's triggering your meltdowns tell them you know so this i don't like it when you do this i don't like it when you do that and then you just learn how to control your meltdowns and learning how to socialize i'd say wherever you go wherever you see a stranger if you go to the shop to buy something just say hello how's your day going every day do that do even wherever you go you see whoever you see just say say hi that's it even an old person just have a conversation every day you're gonna get better that's what i learned to do for the past year i just spoke to strangers all the time and you will get better at communicating even eye contact just practice it just look there even look at the shoulder practice it with your family members like when you're speaking to them just practice it every day you'll get better brilliant love that so you you know people struggle with this even if yeah. they haven't got autism so yeah. it's not just like, yeah you know it's, it's a matter of some people, people like have struggle. social anxiety and stuff like that yeah i did have that as well so yeah uh, i mean you know it's uh um i suppose you know these days uh, things like anxiety and social anxiety get used as excuses um and, and whatnot but um so for a parent then who's got a young child obviously the child isn't going to go out and start speaking to strangers what can they do to help them to to manage it so with that is try and get support from doctors and the school because early childhood autism i don't really look into it too much because my i mean i'm an adult now i mean because my mom's worked with autistic kids so she kind of understands that so it's mainly support get the support and there's certain stuff like they like to play with they like to line toys do stuff that they like so the kids a lot of kids are glued to their phone and ipad now which i think is bad we're all glued to our phones now but mm. so mainly try and play play with them but see a specialist that's the best thing because I can't mm. give my a lot of advice on a child that's autistic. Well, we don't know that. what the relationship is with the child and mom and dad. Brilliant. Every household is different. Quite, that's actually quite a mature answer. Yeah. So, you know, that's good stuff. Um, I don't like to sell people a dream and tell them this and give them hope. No, brilliant. Like a lot of people do that. Mm. So is there... Do you have, do you have like support groups? Is there autism support groups out there now, or do you use them? Do you recommend them? Like, uh, what's the what's the scene like in in that respect? Yeah, there is one. There's in Brad. There's one in Bradford. I made a video and I went to visit it once. It wasn't for me to be honest, um, but I feel like I'm. Be- I I feel like I don't need that kind of support. Maybe on my anger, and my meltdowns, but I'm learning how to control that now. But I wanna I wanna do try and fix something myself and then take it to someone that can really help me. 
but yeah, yeah it wasn't for me but yeah i do give people advice yeah go they go to like centers and mm-hmm. get support but i was planning on opening my own autism support group at the time with with another friend of mine who's autistic but we didn't get the funding approved so unfortunately mm-hmm. for that we didn't get the funding okay no worries, no worries. but that is a plan to like open my own center Brilliant. And, and what would you do different with this centre then that's not already been done by the current support? Or to put that question another way, are the current support structures lacking? No, because that be place, or? that place I went to, you know, first session was free. They were charging £77 per session. That's a lot of money. With mine, I'm not, I, I, I don't, I don't want to charge. I want to try and get funding from council and then try and do trips, take them out, uh, you know, Take them to a boxing gym where, where it's just a class just for autistic people. Help them, you know, learn how to box a bit just for fun. You know, take them to food places, stuff like that. Even try and get them jobs, find them jobs, work experience so they can get somewhere in life. Like do courses. That's my kind of plan if I want to expand it and go further. Mm-hmm. And and um, I suppose you'd be encouraging them to become content creators and make videos, or yeah, the content them. creation now TikTok is like a it's like a gold mine at the moment. Loads of people are selling products on TikTok and making good money. It's it's all about patience. It takes time. If they want to become a content creator, they can by all means. What is your plan with the content creation? And obviously, I, you know, you're making videos. Um, I think you've got you've got seventy seven thousand followers now. Sure that's a big following. That's a big following. So. Is your TikTok monetized then? Are you making money from it yet? Or are you planning to? How are you planning no, it's to? All, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was business? making it was making decent money at the time. It's quite, it's crashed a bit now because TikTok are just all over the place. Oh, uh, okay. but, yeah, so main at the moment TikTok shop. That's what I'm focusing on selling a product. People buying them. Um, yeah, that's it. To be honest, my plan is just to try and get a hundred thousand followers this year, um, and. I want to do like talks like like a friend of mine he does like public talks and but he teaches people how to talk as well he said to me try and go to schools and speak about it, colleges so that that might be another plan to speak in a public like you know going to schools and yeah. stuff speaking about all it. great ideas yeah all all great ideas yeah Chris, home or podcast you maybe even start yeah. your own podcast so. yeah um no it's been brilliant i mean i, I you know it's, it's half an hour has flown by like you know yeah yeah, yeah. It's like it's been five minutes but um you know i don't want to keep you too long uh so what you know any last words for people who's struggling with the same minotaur as yourself so i suppose there's two minotaurs yes one is the autism and one the hair loss for men i know for a lot of men it's a big insecurity so yeah what what kind of last words and advice do you have for for people struggling with these minotaurs all right for autism yeah don't let it come in the way don't let it think of it in your life because that's just gonna drag you down think of it as a superpower something you're blessed with something like special yeah a friend said that to me he said you can't let it get in your life too much so don't let it get too much of your life go you know go try and find something you're good at um you know find a job for the time being and build a skill on the side and maybe go on to opening your own business or stuff like that and for the hair loss once you see anything about thinning straight away act to it jump on a protocol medical regimen and just try and fix it early as possible instead of it going worse and worse and worse that's my advice really so if you guys want to follow my tiktok is h x r i s dot h same as my instagram and if you have any questions you can message me and i will give you my help brilliant appreciate that and you know i will drop those links to those uh, tiktok and instagram in the description below wherever you're watching this so yeah thank you for coming here i appreciate you taking the time out um i applaud your courage um in coming out and speaking about this stuff so it's, it's, it's not a small thing so you know be proud of yourself and continue with this journey which i wish you the best of success with uh as for the viewer i hope you found this uh, episode enlightening i mean it's the first time i've had this conversation so it's, it's definitely something new for me um but yeah i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next episode take care now bye bye